Do we all remember when Piyush Goel publicly blasted founders for building delivery apps over deep tech? Fast forward, he's now unlocked India's biggest deep tech war ever. That wasn't a rant, it was actually a wake-up call. India just made a move that perfectly captures its ambition. At Tyacon Delhi NCR, while global markets obsess over GPUs and frontier models, Commerce Minister Piyush Goel laid down a very different kind of benchmark. Technological sovereignty is the next trillion dollar race. And India is done renting its future from, well, foreign innovators. Clearly, it was a strategic doctrine for the next 25 years. So over the last decade, India built the world's most powerful digital rails from, well, 250 million internet users to, well, 1 billion. Connected Indians, DBT, Aadhaar, UPI, to governance at population scale. 25 crore people lifted from poverty via direct welfare rates. That first revolution made India the backbone of global software. The next one aims to make India the brain of global deep tech. Not a service factory, not the world's back office, but the engine room of frontier innovation. Goyal's message was blunt. India must reduce dependence on foreign technology, weapons, energy and inputs. Because in a world of supply chain wars and semiconductor choke points, sovereignty isn't military anymore. It's actually technological. India can't rely on imported chips, foreign defense tax or external clouds when AI, quantum and cyber are the new battlefields. The era of assembly line Swadeshi is over. This is IP Swadeshi, Compute Swadeshi, Innovation Swadeshi. To prove that it's serious, India announced a moonshot, a 100,000 crore Anusandhana fund, which is approximately $12 billion equivalent to that. But with actually India's talent cost advantage closer to $100 billion plus in innovation output. And there's more. Startup Fund of Funds 2.0 dedicated entirely to deep tech founders. So India's innovators don't dilute their companies to foreign capital before they scale. Think of it as India's DARPA moment, but built on democracy, inclusivity and national pride, not secrecy. India produces 15 lakh engineers per year, 24 lakh STEM graduates annually, highest STEM talent pipeline on the planet. Silicon Valley isn't just watching, it's recruiting, relocating and betting big on Indian engineers. Now, India wants to build for the world from the world's largest talent base, not just code for someone else's roadmap. This shift isn't about actually shutting doors, it's about building our own doors and manufacturing the hinges. So from semiconductors to space, AI to quantum, defense tech to energy tech, India is signaling a tectonic shift. Global leadership isn't given, it's designed, engineered and sovereign. And for once, policy, capital and ambition are aligned. So finally, India built the rails that powered the digital century. Now, it wants to build the engines that run the deep tech century. From software exporter to intelligence exporter, from cloud consumer to, well, compute builder, from startup nation to sovereign tech power in Goel's words, India is not a shipment meant to stay safely in harbour. It's actually time to sail, innovate and command the frontier. The world built on Silicon Valley might just meet the century built in Bharat.